Hey, it's Andrew with GY6 Vids, and in today's video, we're taking a look at the Sentry Arms Canic TP9 SA 9mm pistol. So most of you have probably already heard about the TP9 SA pistol. It's been around for some time now. I've seen it on the market. It's a pistol that's usually under $400. I mean, it's always under $400. Most of the time it's around 350 bucks. Sometimes on sale you can get it for less than $300. Sometimes it's around that 290 mark, which is kind of, you know, one of those things you look at and you're like, oh man, it's under 300 bucks. It's gotta be a piece of crap. Well, it's been around for some time now and I've been seeing some good reviews about it, been seeing some good blog reviews about it and I had to take a look for myself. But let's go over the details of it and let's talk about the TP9SA, all the positives and negatives of the ergonomics and visuals and components of the gun before we start shooting. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, when I got the TP9SA, I was really impressed with the fact that even though it is a sub $400 gun all the time and sometimes sub $300 gun, it came with features that most $1,000 guns don't come with. Uh, most, you know, five, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred $600, $700, $800 guns don't come with. And, you know, granted, there are guns that do come with hard cases and good features as well. I know uh, Springfield XDs come with a lot of extra goodies and a good case as well. But, you know, being a gun that's under $400, it was pretty impressive. So let's first get into it. It comes with a Serpa style holster for your firearm. I'm not a huge fan of the Serpa styles, but you know, it is what it is. I'm not, this is my biggest concern though. You think maybe they would form fit it a little bit tighter than that. Um, I'm a stickler for rattling. I don't like rattling at all, but that's what you're hearing on here. On the back side of the holster, you can tell that it's got screws that you can attach your paddle holster to. It's got the paddle holster attachment or a belt holster attachment as well. That both comes in the case. You have a little cleaning kit, a little cleaning rod, cleaning brush. You also have a back strap, that the larger version. It comes with a smaller version that's already on the gun. And it comes with two 18 round magazines. Pretty impressive. Um, I know I've heard a lot of things where people think it's not really an 18, it's like 17 or so on and so forth. It is 18. I've loaded them up numerous times and they are 18, which is nice. You have 18 plus one for the gun and you get two of them, one in the gun, one on the side. And that is the case. And you have a little speed loader here as well. So, you know, getting that with a gun that is sub $400 is impressive. All right, so right out of the box, you definitely notice that this TP9SA resembles a lot of other firearms that have already been out in the market for some time now. It's definitely designed after the Walther P99. It's got a lot of the Smith & Wesson MMP style features as well with the slide. You also have a lot of the features of the Glock, but of course with the trigger. But it's not a horrible thing. I mean, Sentry Arms is designing a firearm after firearms that have already been popular in the market, so it's a smart move. But when I first got out of the box, I was like, let's, let's see, you know, you got that, it's kind of like when you first ask for it off the rack, you're like, yeah, I'm going to touch it and see what happens. Feels amazing. I like, I have big hands and I like the way it fits. This is the small back strap. You can kick out the bottom pin. And once you kick out that bottom pin, this kind of pops on and off. And then you can reverse it with the larger back strap if you'd like. But I personally like the smaller back strap. It gives me a good purchase on the gun. Uh, at the top of the grips, you can tell that there is an index and thumb uh, cut out right around the polymer frame so it gives you a higher purchase on the gun. You almost naturally want to put your hand as high as possible which is going to give you that lower bore axis feel which gives you more control over the gun. And on the back side you kind of have these 3D raised polymer checkering. So moving further forward in the gun you go into the trigger guard it's a wide open trigger guard which I like so when you're shooting with gloves on you can get your finger in there and you don't have to worry about kind of having to stuff it in and trying to figure out a way without depressing the trigger. It's open and it reminds me a lot of the H&K USPs. Moving into the overall dimensions of the gun though, you're looking about seven and a half inches of overall length. With the overall height, you're looking at just above five and a half inches. Now the overall width, you're looking at the 1.3, just under 1.3 inches in overall width, depending upon where you measure it. All right, so moving to the rest of the features of the firearm though, we're going into the sights. The sight picture is a three dot sight picture. You have one dot in the front, two dots in the back with a center post in between the rear two dots. It does stand out enough where you can get a good sight picture, but I will paint one of those eventually. Now the rear sight is adjustable for drift. So it's got a windage adjustment, but it doesn't have your vertical adjustment. So your elevation adjustment is not gonna be there, which kind of stinks, but it does adjust for windage. Now I haven't touched these sights, nor am I gonna touch them until I'm done shooting. I wanna see how it shoots right out of the box without any adjustment. Now. The sights are great, they feel very solid. They are metal sights, they're not plasticky, they're not gonna fall off this gun, which I like. I hate plastic sights, I hate the feeling that if I were to drop my gun on its ass end of it, that the whole sight picture will break off. That would stink, it's not really fun. So knowing that there are still sights, it is nice, and it does have an adjustment for at least windage. So 
positive. Um, you do have a chambered round indicator as well on the firearm, so it will stick up when you have a round inside the gun. Now, when you drop the slide and your gun is charged, you have a viewing window. It's got a little dot, and that dot lets you know that the gun is cocked. It's not telling you that there's a round in the gun. For instance, right now, there's no ammo in the gun, and you can see that little dot disappear. So as it's chambered, you know that it's cocked. It doesn't mean it's loaded. I like that feature because of this next issue on the gun. <laughs> This has a decocker lever on the top of it. And this has been the bane of the TP9SA's existence is the decocker on the top of the slide. Now, a lot of other firearms have a decocker on them, but the main issue with it is this is a single action only firearm. It's not a double action, single action. So once you've depressed that decocker, your trigger is now inert until you reset the trigger. So you have to either power stroke the weapon or you can press check. Now press checking, you can literally just move it about a couple centimeters and you're back in. So it doesn't take a lot of motion. You can just press check a little bit. That motion right there will reset the trigger every time. But the decocker in itself, you decock it, boom. Now your indicator window's down. You don't have that red dot anymore, but at night inside your house, you can't see that. You'll still feel that you have a chambered round, but your gun, when you go to really do business, is not gonna be there. So it's single action only, it's not double action. The nice thing is, is their new model, the TP9 V2, is double action and single action. So it's taken away that problem, which is nice, and that's what they fixed on it. Plus, it looks a little bit different than this gun, but I wanted to look at the TP9 SA first. And if you guys like that, going back to an older firearm, we can do some more in the future. Let me know. So moving on the rest of the firearm, we do have a safety trigger just like the Glock and a lot of firearms nowadays because there is no external safeties on this gun. There are no external safeties. Once you've chambered the firearm and you have a round in there, you pull the trigger, it's gonna go off. Beyond the trigger safety, the trigger is phenomenal. I'm, for a gun that's sub $400, it is a great trigger. Quarter inch of take up and then it's just nice and stiff and you just put extra pressure onto it, nice and easy, and it depresses. Nice and easy. The trigger pull, the poundage on this trigger is just under five pounds on average. But moving on from the trigger now, the breakdown of the firearm was fantastic. You drop your magazine, just like that. You decock the firearm. You can pull down on both these tabs on the left and right hand side. And you can see the gun kind of shifts forward a little bit and you just slide the top off. That is how easy it is. I was like, yes, I love easy disassembly. I hate all the pins and unnecessary garbage that you have to do to get your gun apart. Now from here you can do standard maintenance, but to put it back together, you literally just line it up and you're good to go again. Gun can fire. Magazine is the last step. It is phenomenal. These are the Metgar magazines, so you're gonna get some quality steel magazines out of this, and so far I'm loving it. I hate sticky magazines, so having a mag that drops free easily, and also when it inserts, you hear an audible click. That is the features of the gun. Very cool so far. I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. I like the dimensions. I like the mechanics of it. Now let's see if it shoots properly. Okay, it's so right 21 feet. We're gonna do a little bit of accuracy and durability testing right now. We're gonna do 200 rounds in a row straight out of the box and this is the uh, prime situation for it to go bad because if we were to take it down and clean it, put some good lube or grease in there, it's gonna perform a little bit better. But right out of the box, no lubrication, no cleaning. We're gonna shoot 200 rounds, center mass and see what happens. All right, first set of 18. All right, so first shot, I had the front post um, making the center of the center mass target at the top of my circle. And then the second shot, I put it at the base of the circle. So I pretty much hovered the front post slightly above center mass and impacted dead center. Uh, windage looks like it's doing perfect, so let's keep shooting at that. Okay, so first mag, as you can tell, if you take your time, it's definitely impacting very accurately. Um, but when you want to speed up your shots, it's gonna move around a little bit, but still that's very good at just shooting one after another after another. I'm gonna do one shot each of those circles at top and let's get it out of the way of the idea of isn't an accurate firearm. 
most pistols aren't meant for anything more than you know 20 yards uh 25 yards at max uh, rounds especially nine millimeters start flying all over the place so i'm not going to say is this going accurate a long distance as long as it's hitting where i want it to hit within at least an inch two inches it's a good accurate gun for self-defense i'm not going to beat around the bush and try to split hairs all right one in the circles left top right Yeah, I'll take that all day long. I'm hitting slightly low into the right. First one, a little bit lower, but you know, two and three, you're impacting almost dead center where you want it, a little bit off. And if I were to take my time even more, probably even better. So let's just work the rest of this mag around the top three and see if it stays consistent with being controlled. All right, see what happens. Yeah, I'll call this accurate. I mean, moving from one target to the next to the next, even moving while keeping a decent pace, it's impacting great. I mean, especially the left target, I felt like I was more in line with that one. The right one, I pulled a couple shots, that's on me. I know it's not like probably what you're looking for for a thousand dollar gun, but for sub 400, in some cases sub 300, uh, I'm not gonna complain one bit. And it feels great too. That trigger is definitely what I thought it would be. It's a little bit of a take up and then a smooth break and then the reset's nice and smooth as well. My best shots were coming from putting that front post just above where I wanted to impact. So I wish it had an elevation adjustment on the backside rather than just the windage and drift adjustment. But other than that, it is hitting where I want it to hit. Let's dump the rest of these magazines, get the rest of the 200 onto targets and see what happens. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of jams. So hopefully we have none, but let's see. Okay, so far so good. Get that mag out, next mag in. All right, so far all center mass and just ripping them off. All right, we have two more mags loaded up. We have one that's 18 and one that's 10. As you know, 100 rounds, that's five 18 round magazines, and then one 10 round magazine makes 100. So we'll finish this up. This is the Winchester white box, and then we're gonna go right into the DRT, lead free 85 grain training ammunition, but 18 more, then 10, and then the DRT. So far, so good. All right, 10 more. All right, all of them on center mass, maybe one a little high, I think. I think I see one a little low too, but we're just ripping them off. We're not going for extreme accuracy. We want center mass shooting and we want to see how it feels when you're doing back-to-back -back shots. Let's replace all the targets real fast and then we're going to go in the DRT training ammunition and see what that looks like. All right, so we have the DRT 85 grain training ammunition. Let's see what happens when we shoot the first 18 center mass. We're gonna take a little bit of time, but not too fast, but just enough time. And then the next mag, we'll work it all the way across the top three like we did before with the Winchester and see where the point of impacts change and see where the accuracy is as well. All right, let's get going. All right, so it's still hitting a tad bit low, even when I'm aiming dead center. As you can tell, it's a little bit higher than before, but now I'm gonna put the front post just above where I wanna impact and see what happens. There you go. Not bad. DRT training ammunition, very accurate. I started picking up my pace, had two flyers, one high, one low, opposite of the nice tight group that you're seeing. 
um, but I was putting bullet on bullet there for a second. Very accurate, switch to another mag. Let's go now to the top three. We're gonna work our way left, middle, right, and just keep doing that, taking our time for accuracy and see where we're at. So far, no jams, no malfunctions, nothing. All right, interesting. Um, this, the groups are so great. The right target up top, not happy with. But overall, accuracy is great. The left and right targets getting a nice little group appearing low into the left. All right, so that was two mags there. Let's get another two mags onto target. Let's dump them into the center mass a little bit faster this time, and then we'll finish with the fifth mag and then 10 rounds from the last mag to accumulate our 200. After this, we're gonna be throwing this gun, we're gonna open up. This is, we're not gonna clean it. We haven't cleaned it at all yet. Um, it's getting a nice little gunpowder residue in the front. We haven't cleaned it at all yet. We're gonna open up the action and we're gonna throw it into the sand. We got a lot of sand right now. Sand is a pain in the ass for firearms. So we're gonna open it up, throw it in the sand, put another mag into it, drop the slide, hold it out with one hand just for safety. I don't wanna get too close to my face, just to be better off. Rip off a couple rounds, see if it keeps shooting. Rack the slide a little bit, see how it sounds, and see how it performs when we start putting it through, oh crap, I dropped it in the dirt scenarios. <laughs> 18 more, dead center. Interesting, it feels different with these lighter loads. You're used to kind of leaning into your shot with a little bit hotter lows, they kick a little bit more. These 85 grainers, they're moving fast, but not a lot of weight, so it's interesting. Let's see if I can hold it in a different way to get them all dead center. All right, 18 more. All right, not bad. 18, right in the middle. All right, ah, looks like we had one flyer slightly high right next to the one with the Winchester. Let's do 10 more, see where we're at. That is 200 rounds with the Canik Sentry Arms TP9SA. So as you guys can tell, we've been shooting the crap out of this thing some more. Still shooting great. We haven't had a single malfunction jam or stovepipe out of 500 rounds. We've already got up to another 300. We've been shooting around barrels, shooting more for B-roll, shooting more for behind the scenes stuff. Uh, it hasn't jammed yet and we haven't lubricated it, we haven't cleaned it. So shooting regular style, not really what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna take this and then we're gonna put it in the sand as you can see over there, now we're gonna go get it, load it with a mag, and I'm gonna look away from it so I'm not gonna keep my eyes on and just dump an entire magazine to see if it still fires. So let's go get this. All right, ooh. Well, I would guess on impact it dropped the slide. Destroyed our target. Ooh, it's gonna bring it right back to you guys. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So as you can see this, it's um, caked in there. There's not much more I need to say other than, uh. Uh, see if we can get some of that gunk out of there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
See, this is where, oh, no, breaking it free. You just rack the slide a few times, get all the junk at it. I'm not even gonna open it up. Mag in, I'm gonna close it. Oh shoot, ears in. <laughs> I don't wanna fool around, making myself deaf. Okay, guess I'm pointed. Guess I'm pointed in a safe direction. Yeah, all right. And locked back. Interesting. So we drop our magazine, we take this guy, which is obviously clear, and back in the sand it goes. Let's see if we can do it again. All right, so if all this sand wasn't enough, let's do this. Let's grab a big old handful of sand inside the action. Okay, so I'm just dumping it in there inside the slide, inside the magwell. That should be enough. Ah. And then what you do is you would, I am gonna inspect the bore. I don't wanna have a huge chunk of dirt in there. Yeah, don't have any big rocks or anything. I just wanna make sure there's no rocks. I don't care if there's a little bit of sand, but no rocks. Drop the slide. Ooh. Oh, wow, still feels pretty smooth. No lubrication. No cleaning, another magazine in, chambered. All right, seated all the way forward. Safe direction. And lock back. I mean, sand is one thing, right? The gun nut in me kind of goes, no. All in the name of science. Very few times you have a gun that you can beat the ever-living piss out of. Uh, definitely getting jacked up. And it is, you know, a, a gun that's Cerakoted, Sentry Arms, Canic, TP9, um, they say that the gun is Cerakoted when you get them in different colors and so on and so forth. Um, a good Cerakote job will withstand amazing abuse. I just threw this once hard and the whole back end is scraped off down to the metal. I can see that the tan is definitely no longer tan. <laughs> Let's uh, toss it one more time. Ready? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Uh. Yeah. I mean, it gets jacked up. Throw it on the ground, fill it up, beat it up on sand, whatever else. Let's see if this still fires. Good. Oh. 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 Finally. Out of about. Oh. Very not big deal. No. Oh. Out of all the rounds, that has been the first failure to feed. Oh. Oh, it was a failure to extract. Uh, the one that didn't cycle it through, just didn't extract. Still locked back. So one round, failure to extract, that is all. Wow, great gun. I'm gonna give it two thumbs up for being a gun that's sub $400 that kicks ass. Uh, it's fun. And a huge shout out to drtammo.com. They were the provider of the ammunition today in today's video. We did shoot some Winchester white box, but main ammo we were shooting was the DRT 85 grain training ammunition. Head over to youtube.com forward slash gy6vids. Make sure to subscribe. Also, facebook.com forward slash gy6vids. Instagram.com forward slash gy6vids. We definitely like talking to you and seeing what's up with our fans as well. So come hit us up on social media. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.